Chapter 10, Process Implementation with Executable Model. In this chapter, we discuss how we can make process models executable for implementing processes. We first need to identify the automation boundaries. We need to review manual tasks. And we have to complete the process model. Then we have to bring process models to an accurate level of granularity and specify execution properties. We also look at the last mile of deploying them. We have reached the process implementation phase of the BPM lifecycle. And we are now concerned with creating executable process models. These can be used at runtime to process new business cases. This chapter is largely concerned with turning conceptual models into executable models. Executable models can be used by a process-aware information system to coordinate the execution of a business process. We propose a systematic method. This method helps us to transform the conceptual to an executable process model. It considers five steps, identifying the automation boundaries, reviewing the manual tasks, completing the process model, bringing the model on the adequate level of granularity and specifying execution properties. By following this method, the conceptual model incrementally becomes less abstract and more IT-oriented. As part of this method, we discuss also two complementary standards to BPMN, the Case Management Model and Notation, CMMN, and the Decision Model and Notation, DMN. Chapter 10, Section 1, Identifying the Automation Boundaries. A key challenge is to define the exact boundaries of a business process. The first observation is that not all processes can be automated. For this reason, we need to establish which parts of a process can be coordinated by a BPMS, and which parts not. Determining this defines the boundaries of the process. Our starting point is usually a conceptual model that we have created during process discovery or during process redesign. The activities of that process need to be more specifically distinguished. For making them executable, we need to identify three different types of tasks. Category 1 is automated. These are tasks that are performed by the BPMS itself or by an external service without any human intervening. Then we have manual tasks. They are performed by process participants without the aid of any software. Finally, we have user tasks. They are performed by participants with the assistance of the work list handler of the BPMS or an external task list manager. In terms of notation, we rely on specific symbols that BPMN introduces. For capturing the distinction between automated, manual and user tasks, BPMN introduces so-called specific markers in the top left corner of each task box. Manual tasks are marked with a hand. User tasks with a user icon. Automatic tasks 
can be further classified as belonging to one of the following subtypes. It can be scripts, like a script marker, if the task executes some code internally to the BTMS. It can be a service, like a gears marker, if the task is executed by an external application which exposes its functionality via a service interface. It can be a business rule, like a table marker, if the task triggers a business rule to be executed by a rules engine external to the BTMS. It can be also a send, represented by a filled envelope marker, if the task sends a message to an external service. Likewise, it can be a receipt, shown with an empty envelope marker, if the task waits for a message from an external service. Exercise 10.1 illustrates this first step. The task of this first step is usually as follows. We can assume that we have a BPMN model available like the one here shown. We now go step by step through each of the activities that are shown in this process and we determine if we should actually represent them as manual, automated or user tasks. In our modeling tool we choose the appropriate task markers for each of these tasks. Chapter 10, Section 2. Review manual tasks. The challenge with manual tasks is that they are not visible by the BPMS. The BPMS does not know if there exists at all, nor does the BPMS know anything about their status. This means the manual tasks have to be somehow changed to make them visible to the BPMS. They could be implemented as a user task or as an automated task. For example, think of a manual task that is called pick something like an item from the warehouse. Classically, this task was a manual task. A user walked through the warehouse and fetched the particular items. In many warehouses, it has become a user task, with partially also steps that are automated. The workers carry scanners, and by using the scanners, they can change this manual task to a user task. They scan the item, and in this way, the information system becomes aware of the status of this task. Chapter 10, Section 3. Complete the process model. We often face the challenge that conceptual models are incomplete. This is often the case due to the following facts. First, there are many exceptions in real-world processes. It is difficult to catch them at their full extent. Second, the conceptual models do not explicitly model the data that is processed. This means we need to specify the data types and we need to specify how that data is being used for taking, for example, decisions.
Let's first look at the exceptions of a process. Often, the conceptual model is meant to be understandable. For this reason, it often neglects certain information that the conceptual modeler may not deem relevant. Depending on the application scenario, it may be fine to neglect this information for a conceptual model. However, if we want to make the model executable, we have to cover all the details. And that means also the details of how certain exceptions are handled. This means the conceptual model that you may take as a starting point needs to be enriched with additional branches that represent handling such exceptions. Furthermore, the conceptual models only show the names of the data objects, but not their structure. The purpose is here that all electronic data objects that are required as input and output by the tasks of a process need to be specified. While the conceptual model only shows that these data objects exist, the executable model needs to represent them explicitly in detail. Each data object needed by the BPMS engine to pass control between different tasks and to take decisions must be explicitly modeled. That means for each data object, we must know which are its data attributes and which are its potential ranges of values.